The biggest ChatGPT update of the year has just released. We now have the ability to create our own GPT. And not only that, but ChatGPT has completely upgraded the dashboard to something that's actually nice to be on. It's also combined the features of multiple different elements of ChatGPT. So it's all in one now. You can attach images, upload files, generate images, all in one GPT-4 mode. You no longer have to select between different ones. You can browse the web with this as well. So this is much more powerful. You know, you can browse the web while uploading photos. You can have access to that live data. This is going to be a fun video. I'm going to briefly touch on the dashboard changes and some of those things. And then I'm going to jump into how to create your own GPT. That way you can start to build your workflow and you'll actually be able to use ChatGPT for everyday tasks and be able to switch between GPTs. It's going to be wonderful, but first, Let's dive in and learn how to create them. Wow, so take a look at this new dashboard. We no longer have the GPT-4, GPT-3.5 model selector up top, but it's actually in the upper left-hand corner and you can click on it. This already looks nicer, a lot more clean. As you can see, GPT-4, it says with Dolly, browsing and analysis all in one. You can upload images, generate images, web browsing, all of this stuff in one model. So you no longer have to switch between different ones. And then GPT 3.5, the everyday task model, something that we can use for basic text output where we don't need advanced reasoning. We can switch to that very quickly. Plugins does have its own separate thing. Eventually, will they add plugins to this? Maybe because I think plugins with all of these could be super, super powerful. This is the new chat button. So if you're ever in a chat, you can now just select this button in the top left hand corner to start a new chat. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the sidebar. As you can see, it looks beautiful. I'm loving this. Now let's actually get into the fun part of this update, the biggest part of this update, which is the ability to create your own GPT. How do you get there? How do you create a GPT? How do you configure a GPT? And then how can you use them once you have them? Well, I'm going to show you everything you need to know in this video, so stick around till the end. What you need to do first is you need to hit this explore button under chat GPT. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit explore. And now you have this new little dashboard area where you can see the made by OpenAI GPTs. You can kind of click through these and try them out, see how it works. Or you have the button up here to create your own GPT, create your own reality, you know, create your own chat bot that you need to use for a specific purpose. That's what we're going to do. We're going to break it down very simple. I'll show you a basic use case. That way you can start applying it to your own chat GPT. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select create a GPT and now we get this nice little screen where you can create and configure your new GPT. And over here on the right side, you get a test box where you can message your GPT, kind of tweak it along the way. That way you don't have to save it, try it, go back and edit it. It's nice that they give you this little preview box. So first let's start and make sure that we are in the create tab. It's important to keep in mind that when you're building this GPT, just use natural language. You don't need anything crazy. Um, it's just like you're talking to a chat bot. You're don't, you don't need to know code. You can even upload files to this in order to help better understand uh, what you're trying to create. Maybe you have a diagram of what you want to create, or some written words. You can upload that file and it will help you create and configure this chat bot. So as I said, natural language, we're going to start in the create tab. We are on a new GPT and this is currently a draft. It says, hi, I help you build a new GPT. You can say something like make a creative who helps generate visuals for new products or make a software engineer who helps format my code. What would you like to make? So again, type in ChatGPT, what do you wanna make? Give it a base level idea of what you wanna create and then it will start to go through the steps and more important things about how do you want it to respond and other stuff like that. So since I'm in YouTube, maybe it would be useful to have a YouTube video generation bot. So whenever I have an idea or whenever I need help with an idea, uh, maybe I want to create ideas based off other videos that have previously done well on my channel, uh, I want this GPT to specialize in that. So I don't really have to use custom instructions and all of this other stuff in order to get it done. Well, what I can do is I can type in a message to the GPT builder to make a YouTube video strategist. So something as simple as that, make a YouTube video strategist. I can send off that message. Right off the bat, it's going to start off by asking a name suggestion. And as you can see on the right here, it already has changed. I strategize for YouTube success. Very personalized feeling, very tailored solution to all of your problems. It says, great, we're crafting a GPT that specializes in YouTube video strategy. How about we name it Video Vantage? Would that work for you? You can either rename it whatever you want, or you can just take the suggestion. You can even ask to give it more suggestions, but I'm just going to stick with Video Vantage. Yes. That works. As you can see, it says generating profile picture. So it's going to create your own GPT icon with AI. This is very, very cool. 
As you can see, it generated this profile picture and I'm not really liking it. I want it to be a little bit more simple. I can just ask it, can you make it more simple? Send it off, natural language. Again, we're not using any code to create this, this chat bot that specializes in YouTube success. What we're doing is we're just talking to it like a human. The beautiful thing about ChatGPT, kind of democratizing AI and helping it bring everything to everyday people that aren't studying code. Yes, as you can see, it generated this new one and I love this one. It almost has that YouTube logo in the middle there. So I'm going to put, yes, I love it. And then it's going to continue walking you step by step on uh, you know, the outputs of this chat bot. Now you can go as in-depth as you want on this. You can have it say certain things, send certain messages when certain words appear, give uh, certain responses based on certain commands that you input. You can do all that, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to leave it simple. I want it to respond in a casual yet professional manner. And it says, great choice. It's important that video vantage is approachable, but always conveys expertise. Then it kind of throws some limitations on the chat bot, you know? It says, what kind of content should Video Vantage avoid when interacting with users? Maybe I'm trying to target a monetizable audience and I don't want this to target people under 18. I can say it, can, it should avoid content that is targeted at an audience under 18. I can send off that message. And the cool thing about these GPTs is I'm not only creating it for myself, but you can uh, provide a link for a company to use, your friends to use, or anybody that has the link to Video Vantage to also use. It moves on to the next question in order to form this chatbot. It says, moving on, how detailed should it be when providing strategy advice? Should it provide high-level guidance or should it go in-depth with step-by-step -step instructions? I like the step-by-step -step instructions. I don't really want it to be too high-level. I want it to be very in-depth and very telling of what I should do next. I say, I want it to be step-by-step -step instructions, very in-depth and clear on what I need to do for growth. I'm going to send off this message. The next question they asked me is, should it directly ask questions to get more information or should it lean towards using the information that's provided by us in order to make assumptions? Personally, I like the follow-up questions. I like when it dives deeper into what we actually want because that's what helps you become successful in whatever you're trying to do with ChatGPT. So I'm going to type that out and send that off. Ask questions for more information. Boom, send it off. This is very fun, all natural language. It's kind of walking us through the process in order to create a successful GPT. The last question that it asks is, how would you like Video Vantage to address the user? Should it use their name or keep it general like, hey there? Uh, let's just say, keep it general. You know, we don't need to get too personal with Video Vantage, make people scared that it knows their name or anything. So let's keep it general. So now that we have this uh, GPT created, now we can go to the configure tab and we can kind of see this from a high level view rather than this chat view. So let's switch to configure. We can see this profile picture here. We can upload a photo or use Dali to generate a new one. We can give our GPT a name, a nice description. I personally like the name in the description. It looks very high level, very cool. Then we have some custom instructions here, just like the custom instructions tab that we previously had. We also have some conversation starters down here. And then we have the section called knowledge. You can upload files and this is additional information for your GPT to study and pull from. We have capabilities so we can uncheck these or we can check these. Maybe we want our GPT to have all access to this since it's a video vantage uh, YouTube success GPT. You know, we want access to web browsing. We want access to all of the features, the visuals, the code interpreter. So it's going to be great. We want to keep all of the capabilities in order to make it very powerful. Next, we have the actions tab at the very bottom left. And these are just APIs that the GPT can use. Now I want to test out my model. Let's say I want to create a video title or create video titles that are similar to this video right here, because this video did very well, 153,000 views in four weeks. So let's say I want to create a title for this current video or something like that. What I could do is I could copy the link to this YouTube video. So I'm going to copy it and I'm going to head over to the video vantage preview and I'm going to say, help me generate a title similar to this video from this link. And since we have web browsing activated, it will be able to read links. I'm going to send off this message. And as you can see, it couldn't necessarily access the YouTube content and watch the video but it can still help me create similar titles based on the URL, which suggests it's about ChatGPT. And now it's giving me all of these titles that are similar to this video. And just to show you how advanced this gets and how custom you can actually get it, I'm going to provide a very simple thing at the end of these instructions. I'm going to say, end every response with, with a yippee in all caps. So 
Every time it ends a response, it's going to say yippee in all caps. I just want to show you how custom this can get and how you can really start to manipulate this GPT. As you can see, you have your four conversation starters right here as well that will pop up in those suggested boxes when using your GPT. So I can just send off one of these conversation starters. I can say suggest a content plan. And I'm going to send that off. And as you can see with these new instructions enabled, it will end every response with a, with an all capitals yippee. So it ran me through this. It gives me nice information in order to get started. It's asking me a ton of questions, which, which is going to help me dive deep into my content strategy. And as you can see, it ends the conversation with yippee. So that's just one very basic instruction. It doesn't help or provide anything of value, but it listens to what you say. It listens to the inputs that you provide. And when you start to think that and start to wrap your head around that, you understand how powerful this really can be. Now, I'm not going to go too in-depth on this GPT. I want to show you the basics of how to create one. And that's why we are moving on to the last step, which is when you are happy with it, when you've tweaked it, when you've tested it, you can upload files, add actions, you can do all this stuff. When you're done with it, you want to head up to the upper right-hand corner and hit save. And this is where you're going to get your options with what do you want to do with this GPT? Do you want it to be private? Do you want to be able to share it with um, clients or companies or your friends, so you can do only people with a link, or you can make it public. And then you have this nice little section here where you can hit confirm. I'm going to keep this one to only me. Eventually though, you'll be able to release it to the public and based on how many users are using your GPT, you're going to be able to make an income. So if you wanna learn how to do that, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so that when I make that video, you get notified and you can be the first ones to start selling your GPTs once the GPT store is live, okay? That's very important. Hit the bell icon so you get notified after subscribing. Now I'm going to hit confirm and this is going to save my GPT to my database. So as you can see, I'm in video vantage right now and I can edit it. I can look about it and it tells me who it's by, gives me a little description, very beautiful, powered by GPT-4, all the plugins and everything activated, very wonderful. So now you can start messaging this just as you were in the preview. You can send off stuff and it's going to be custom to your instructions that you provided. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit open sidebar. And as you can see under ChatGPT, you'll have your GPT. Another way to get to your GPTs is by hitting the bottom left-hand corner, your name, and then going up to my GPTs. This will bring you to the page with all of your GPTs and it will have that little discovery thing next to it. You can even hit hide from sidebar if you don't want to see it and you just want to see it in the back end database. Yes, this is very, very cool. Super, super powerful stuff coming to ChatGPT. A very wonderful update. You can create these different bots in order to help you run your personal life, your business life, or whatever it may be. So that's how to create a GPT and kind of the whole rundown of this ChatGPT update. Now, if you want to learn ChatGPT in depth from start to finish, A to Z, then I recommend purchasing my ChatGPT mastery course, which I will be leaving with the link in the description or the top pinned comment. Now, I'm going to be going a lot more in depth on this stuff in the future with the course, so be ready for those modules to come out. If you enjoy this video, please subscribe in order to stay updated. Comment below letting me know your feedback on the update. Do you like it? Is it as exciting as I'm making it seem? Um, what are your thoughts for the future of ChatGPT and so on? Drop a like if you enjoyed this video. Remember to hit that bell icon after you subscribe so you can stay updated with all of my content. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next video.